Good morning, welcome to English. And it is Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you tuned in to Brother Ricky on Sunday afternoon. I hope you tuned in to Pastor or to uh, Brother Gomez for church on Sunday morning. And I hope you're tuning in at night at, at seven for English and 7.30 for Spanish um, for the Fireside Chats by Pastor Wilkerson and Pastor Gomez. Okay, today we're just gonna take a little time and we're going to review, okay? So hang tight. Uh, a couple of times you're going, you might wanna take some notes, especially those that you, the of you that are struggling with phrases and clauses and things like that. So take out a piece of paper and let's take some notes. Write down what you think you need to be reminded of, okay? First, what does a noun, what is a noun? A noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. What is the job of a noun in our sentence? A noun can be the subject, the direct object, the indirect object, the object of a preposition, or the appositive, or the predicate nominative, if you have a linking verb, okay? So, a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea, but subject, direct object, indirect object, a positive, um, predicate nominatives, those are the jobs of a noun, okay? Second, what is a verb? A verb is a word of action, or it is a state of being. If you have an action verb, what kind of complement will you have? You have a direct object. Now, if you have a direct object, you might have an indirect object. But remember, if you have a direct object and you have an indirect object, I'm gonna turn this a little bit so you get a little more bored there, okay? If you have a direct object and you have an indirect object, remember our pattern has to be subject, Verb, indirect object, direct object. The indirect object, though you don't find it in that order, when you do find it, it has to be sandwiched between the verb and the direct order and the direct object. That sentence pattern doesn't change. You need to learn that sentence pattern if you do not know it. Okay? Next, if you have a linking verb. We have a linking verb or a state of being verb. What kind of complement will you have? You will either have a predicate adjective or a predicate nominative. Remember, predicate nominatives equal the subject. In other words, if I say student equals Billy, okay? Student and Billy are the same thing. But if I use a word that it comes after my linking verb and it goes back and describes, if I say Billy is tall, tall describes Billy, so that's called a predicate adjective. Predicate adjectives and predicate nominatives have to come after a linking verb, okay? Next, I ask you, what, are the, what is the definition of an adjective? An adjective is a word that describes a noun or a pronoun. So it's a word that describes a person, it describes a place, or it describes a thing or an idea. For example, I might say the blue coat, the heavy backpack. I'm describing things. I might say the old man. I might say the tall mountain. Again, I'm describing people, I'm describing things. It was a beautiful island, it's a place, okay? Now, those words that describe are called adjectives, okay? There are five questions that an adjective answers. An adjective tells us which one, what kind, how much, how many, or whose. Always one of those five questions. Now, an adverb describes what? An adverb describes a verb, an adjective, or another adverb, okay? An adverb will always describe a verb, an adjective, 
or another adverb, and most of the time it's going to describe the verb. Now, with that being said, what are the questions that an adverb answers? An adverb tells us where, when, how, how often, to what extent. Clauses can tell us why or under what condition. Okay, so there's really seven things that we're gonna look at for an adverb. Now, the one part of speech that I didn't mention today was a preposition. A preposition is also a part of speech. There are eight parts of speech. They are nouns, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Okay, so we only have two left, conjunctions and interjections. We've already talked a little bit about conjunctions this year. Now, in a preposition, remember a preposition is that list of words above, 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 okay, all those things. I'm not gonna go through the list because of time. If you don't know them, <coughs> excuse me, if you do not know them, you must, you must, you must, you must memorize them. You have to, okay? If you don't, you're going to, you might skim by right now, but you're going to struggle. You need to memorize your prepositions if you haven't. Now, remember, a preposition is something I can do to a log. I can be beside it, on it, under it, over it, above it, beneath it. These are all prepositions. Prepositions show a relationship between two things. In that particular instance, it was between me and a log, okay? Now, that's a preposition. When you analyze, we find our prepositional phrases first. Now, what does a prepositional phrase look like? Well, it begins with a preposition and it ends with an object. Or in other words, it ends with a noun or a pronoun because pronouns are nothing but words that take the place of a noun. Instead of saying Mrs. Turner, we say she. Instead of saying Brother Francis, we say he. Instead of saying dog over and over, we would say it, okay? Now, let's look, oh, let me ask you one more question. How do I know the difference? A couple of you asked me this when you brought your papers in um, or whenever you sent texts and I had a couple of you that I specifically said, I need you to ask me questions. Tell me what you're struggling with. And that was, how do I tell the difference, Mrs. Turner, again, between a phrase and a clause? Now remember, a phrase is just a group of words acting as one thing. Most of the time when we refer to a phrase, we are talking about a prepositional phrase. Now we might call it an adjective phrase, we might call it an adverb phrase, but that's because that's what it's doing, okay? Um, it'd be like saying, um, instead of saying the third grade class, we may say those jumping up and down boys, okay? Now, I'm just picking on the third graders, no reason, okay? What I'm saying is, when I talk about the noisy children or the noisy boys or the jumping boys or whatever, I'm talking about what they're doing. But who are they? They are the third grade class. Now, in this case, it is a preposition, but what is it doing? Well, it's describing the subject. Well, then it's an adjective because the subject is a noun. It is a prepositional phrase and it's describing the direct object. Well, the direct object is a noun. Since it's describing a noun, it has to be an adjective. In this case, instead of just being a one word adjective, it's an adjective phrase. What about this What about this phrase? This phrase is describing the verb. Well, then it's an adverb phrase, okay? So, an adjective and an adverb phrase is a group of words acting like one thing. It's acting like one adjective or it's acting like one adverb. Normally, those are gonna be our prepositional phrases. Now, there's gonna be some that are participles, okay? And we'll get to those again, we'll review those. What about a clause? A clause, the difference between a phrase and a clause. A clause must have a subject, it must have a verb, but it will not have a complete thought, okay? It will have a subject, it will have a verb, but it will not have a complete thought. 
I've put some review sentences on the board for us today. Let's look at them. Again, I think I'm gonna have to turn this back a little bit so you can see it. There you go. It says, I read in a book that Italy has the most cathedrals. Well, when we analyze a sentence, the first thing we do is find prepositional phrases. So I look at this and say, do I have any prepositional phrases? Well, I do. In a book. In a book is a prepositional phrase, okay? Are there any other prepositional phrases? There are not. Now, what does in a book tell me about? It tells me where I read, okay? So it's telling me about where I read. If something tells me where, then it is a what? It is an adverb, because adverbs tell us when, where, how, how often, to what extent, why, or under what condition. So an adverb tells us where. So in a book tells me where I read. So in a book is an adverb. Now question, adverb phrase, adverb clause. It's an adverb phrase, because it's a prepositional phrase acting like an adverb, okay? Do we see any clauses in this sentence? We do. We see this special word, that. That is a what? It's a relative pronoun. That really has the most cathedrals, okay? Let's look at this. Remember, in a book is a phrase, but that Italy has the most cathedrals is a clause. What's the verb in this? Has. Who or what has? Italy has. Now, it's not the subject and verb of my sentence. The subject and verb of my sentence is I read, okay? Italy has is the subject and verb of my clause. What does this clause do? Does it describe one of these words, I or read? No. It, so it's not describing the subject. It's not describing the verb. It's not describing anything. What's it doing in my sentence then? Well, let's look at it. Remember, we're gonna take this prepositional phrase out. We're gonna pretend it's not there, okay? I read that Italy has the most cathedrals. I read what? That it Italy has the most cathedrals. When you have a subject and verb and you ask what, you're finding the what? The direct object. So this clause is acting like my direct object. Since it's the direct object, it's not an adjective. It's not an adverb, it's a what? Direct objects are always nouns. So this is called a noun clause. A noun clause is a clause, a group of words. It has a subject and a verb. Okay, it's a group of words that all together, it acts like my subject, it all together acts like my direct object or my indirect object or in a positive, okay? So on and so forth. Let's look at the next sentence. It says, that man in the blue shirt is my dad. I love my dad, he's wonderful, okay? Pray for my dad. He's 81 and I'm a little worried about him during all this. His name is Mr. Kidwell, if you think of that. Okay, what's the prepositional phrase? In the blue shirt, okay? In the blue shirt is what kind of a phrase? It's a prepositional phrase. What does it describe? It describes man. Which man? The man in the blue shirt. Since it describes man, I have to say, what is man? Man is a noun. What describes a noun? Adjectives. So that makes this an adjective phrase or an adjective clause. An adjective phrase because it does not have a subject, does not have a verb. Let's go ahead and look at our sentence. What is the verb of my sentence? That man in the blue shirt is my dad. Is, who or what is man? Man is my subject. Since it's a subject, is the word man a noun 
or a pronoun? It is a noun, okay? What kind of verb is is? It is a linking verb, okay? Since it's a linking verb, I need to find my complement. What kind of complement comes after a linking verb? Predicate adjectives and predicate nominatives. Let's look. Man is, is there a word that describes the man? No. Is there a word that is equal to man? It's the same thing as man. Yes, that word is what? Dad. Dad and man are the same thing. So dad is a predicate nominative. What is the word that? That man in the blue shirt. That tells me which one. So that describes man, which means that the word that is an adjective. What are the questions that an adjective answers? Which one? What kind? How much? How many? Or whose? So that is an adjective. It is an adjective. What about the word my? My tells me whose dad? My dad. Okay, so we know that my describes which one, okay? My dad. Tells me whose dad or my, or which dad? My dad. So my is an adjective. 